The following is in described video. If you would like to watch the video without audio description, please follow the link in the description. Fade from black to an old sliding phone in front of a black backdrop, then cuts to a close-up of an iPhone. In 2011, smartphones really started taking off. The iPhone 4 was released and that was obviously a big deal. Cut to an old Samsung phone, and later a Blackberry phone. Following that, the iPhone inspired many other phone brands that tried to make a name for themselves and match the capabilities, reputation, and identity of the iPhone. A hand with blue gloves lays out old phones on the table. Companies then didn't really know how to make a good phone, and phones came in just about every flavor of the rainbow. Back then, there were still around four mobile operating systems in the running, and everything was in flux. The blue gloved hand picks up the Samsung before a transition with gray boxes closing into the center of the screen appears. It is then that we find the release of this product. A title sequence with the words Mobile Museum appear, and then transition to zooming into an old generic Samsung phone. This phone, the Samsung Galaxy Ace GTS 5830D, running Android 2.3 Gingerbread, was bought for a teenager heading into high school in 2011. The phone has a poorly applied screen protector and scratchers and scuffs. Going into high school is a pretty exciting time, and getting a first phone is an event of certain emancipation for many. However, to think of this plastic brick as exciting is hard to imagine to say the least. Its fully black body with cheap chrome accents are uninspiring. It did come with a replaceable white backplate if you ever got tired of black, so I'll give it that. But apart from the tacky build, it bears a striking resemblance to that of a new iPhone of that time. Cut to displaying a scratched up metallic iPod touch and a black iPhone leaning against each other with the camera specifically highlighting the home button, the iPhone 4, which I suppose would make sense. Samsung did used to have quite the reputation of copying Apple's homework. I think not many people would notice it now because all our phones today look more alike with each release. But back when there was more contrast, it was easy to notice the similarities. Cut to the BlackBerry phone being used, then to a Samsung and iPhone stacked on top of each other and comparing features. They have the same volume button location, the same headphone jack location, the same screen size, the same home button, the camera was in the same location, and more or less the micro SD card slot is where the SIM card would be for the iPhone. It somehow takes Apple's striking design and dulls it down to a crayon. Switch to the person wearing the blue gloves using the phone and opening the back of the phone to reveal the battery. It did have some features that separate it from the iPhone, like the additional capacitive buttons on either side of the home button, and the removable back was nice I guess, but the feel in the hand and general size is unmistakable. I don't have an iPhone 4 for comparison, but I do have an iPhone 5, which is a bit taller, has had its headphone jack moved to the bottom, and is slightly thinner. Switch back to a shot of the Samsung on the table. Then gray bars fill up the screen with the mobile museum logo in the middle and a loading bar below. So if this phone is so unremarkable, why are we even talking about it? The phone is placed on a table and shown from multiple angles. We often view situations in a vacuum. Sometimes it helps us, but we have to understand that it is often too easy to take things out of context. For one, this phone was bought in Loblaws, a chain of grocery stores in Canada. This phone was bought in a grocery store. A close-up of the camera lens appears and light sweeps by it. It was also bought by a parent for their child, albeit a growing child. They chose this phone because it was cheap, so little would be lost if it were lost. The old phones and an iPod shown earlier are stacked in a pile with the Samsung carefully placed last. It doesn't need to be complicated. Sometimes choices make it more difficult to decide, and too many features confuse users. This phone isn't meant to stand out. It's meant to offer a good price for people who simply don't care, and sometimes we need to accept that. Sometimes as designers, we must design something that is boring, because boring sells. Sometimes being boring also means blending in, and by extension, looking like everything else. So then, what do we make of this graham cracker of a phone? Where does it belong? Phone is placed on the table, and a transition plays with triangles filling the screen. Then reveals a sweeping shot of the phone beside a mobile museum label. 
The Samsung Galaxy Ace isn't meant for the person who does research on the specs prior to buying a phone at Future Shop. It isn't meant to inspire a new generation of enthusiasts. It works, and that's all that matters. The gloved hand swipes through the phone's dated Android UI. Then the phone is held, with its own name on the screen. In fact, the user wouldn't even know what the phone was called if everything went according to plan and the phone worked perfectly. And there's nothing wrong with that. To that standard, the fact that it works now is a testament to how successful it is. In the example of this phone, it was able to be successful because of how boring it is. Sometimes we need to appreciate the more ordinary things in life, especially in an era where everything is changing. Final shots show the phone beside the mobile museum sign and slowly zooming out. In understanding this phone, we know not everything can stand out, or else things that want to stand out will start blending in. A transition appears and switches to a screen with the mobile museum logo, as well as additional links to other videos. Icons also indicate that the mobile museum has a website, an Instagram page, and a channel without described video in the description below. So some of you may be wondering how it's holding up now. Well, Google Play doesn't really work. Not that anything would support Android 2.3, the Wi-Fi is a bit wonky, the browser is too old to do anything meaningful, but the phone does text and call. The radio is nice to have, and it works well as an MP3 player if you put a micro SD card in it. The camera is also good enough that you can identify what you're shooting at with enough light. However, the battery is the most obvious of all the problems it has. The phone requires life support in the form of a micro USB cable. The battery is cheap and easy to replace, which is nice, but the phone is at its end of its life. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mobile Museum. We will be releasing the next episode exactly one week from now, so stay tuned. Subscribe for free if you'd like to be notified as well. Fade to black.